Hi guys. About a year ago, I made a video on this channel uh, where I told you the story of Dap. Dap is a Vietnamese girl who was uh, the victim of acid attack uh, when she was 17 years old. And um, it was because of jealousy. Um, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you that story again here now. If you're interested to hear that story, it is, uh, you, watch the video, it's, uh, the link is in the corner. But after that video, I, uh, uh, shortly after this video, I went to Vietnam to meet, the, I met up with her in, in, in a school. Uh, she's attending, it's a school for the underprivileged youth. I met up with the director of the school, uh, his name is Nam, and uh, I took a short interview with him and I'm going to show you that interview where he explains what this school is about and uh, how DAP fits in and how she is doing. This is not a sad video, this is, uh, uh, on the contrary, this video is full of uh, joy, forgiveness, uh, kindness, hope and heroes. Dab is a hero. Basically, she was abandoned by her parents uh, when she was very young. They had problems, a lot of problems, drinking and uh, yeah, they basically abandoned her and her uh, sister. And uh, so she was basically homeless for a while, moving between relatives. Uh, she, she quit school so her sister was, uh, would be able to continue in school. So she just started working when she was 13, 12, 13, 14, uh, at a dirty low paying jobs. And then on, then on top of that, all this uh, hardship and misery, when she was 17, a jealous boy came out of the darknet splashed her face with acid and ruined the rest of her life and her future. But Dap did not want to be defeated. She, uh, she adapted to this new condition. She moved on. But there's another uh, hero in this story. A man who is not mentioned very often in, 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 in regard of this. A man who is working behind the scene my friend Nun Mon Puk. You see, at the hospital, that was alone. Her mother came to visit once. After that, she hasn't seen her. And uh, her father never came. So she was basically alone. She had no adult in her life. Um, my friend uh, Puk, he heard about her. Uh, situation. He visited her at the hospital and he decided to help her uh, with, uh, well, whatever she needed. First of all, she just needed uh, medical attention and that costs money. So what he did, he uh, made a, a, a crowdfunding page where uh, he is collecting money for her operations. They have come really far. Uh, first, when I saw her, the uh, ice, uh, one of the eye, eyes was, was melted together. Now she looks much better, the eye is opened. Not sure if she's going to get uh, vision uh, again, but uh, they're trying to fix her face as <coughs> much possible. <coughs> but that costs money. And uh, if you are interested to help that, there is a link in the description where you can contribute something to her, uh, to help her. So, I'm here at uh, a training center in Vietnam and uh, I'm here to meet Deb. But uh, there is more going on here than actually that she is uh, studying here. Uh, I got the director of this uh, training center here. His name is Nam. Here you go. Hello. So, what what is the name of this center, and what is its purpose? 
The name of the center is Andre Maisen Hospitality Training Center. Okay. And the purpose of the center, uh, we gather the underprivileged youth here to train them in the kitchen to be a future chef, okay. in the restaurant to be a restaurant specialist, okay. and in the bakery to become a future baker. To become a future baker. That's nice. So, you see, training a camp for who? For who is your target group? Who do you train here? Okay, we uh, train the poor youth uh, coming from a poor family that they their family cannot really uh, give them a chance to learn at the university or to send their, stu their children to university then we give this opportunity for them at least to, to learn something for for their career in future okay so how normally would one stay how long would they stay okay the program will last for three years three years so so while they stay here are they employed do they receive salary or is it just like a, a training thing okay let's see that when they are here the school you provide them um, daily food mm -hmm. uh, also the place where they stay with us yeah. and the school so everything is free for them so they stay here they have an actual room here so uh, they sleep they, here we have some body houses for yeah. boys and for girls okay um, they will practice here for the first 16 months yeah and after that they will be sent to different hotels restaurants to do the internship okay. when they are having internship outside they will receive some contributions some salary okay okay so so like you know i'm here because of that and uh, how did see how did you get to know her actually we know uh, deb through uh, mr cook yeah. one day mr cook called me up and uh, asked me to allow a girl to study in our school and then I said that yes if uh, she has all the conditions that, um, that we really normally accept then, uh, but later I discovered that she's a victim of asthma attack then I a little bit worry about her situation in this normal environment then I asked him to let her try two weeks here. After two weeks, she really get along with our other trainees very well. And I said, okay, this is her environment. And I accepted her. So everybody here accepted her. Yes. Just like you. That's good. So uh, how long has it been here? Okay, it should be already three months. Three months now? Okay. And how's she doing? For me, she's doing very well. Compared to others, just the same? Or? Uh, I think compared to others, uh, just a normal youth. But I'm a little bit more active than others. Okay. So, uh, because I've seen her here, she is dancing around. She seems very happy. And she is. Okay. She is. Okay. You you mentioned uh, that if she would uh, fall into your criteria of, of acceptance, what exactly are the criteria of acceptance? Actually, the criteria for our trainees here they should come from a poor family, okay. and the age the the the, 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 the age from eighteen to twenty two years old, okay. and she's nineteen years old. Okay. And her situation is very, very special. Yeah. So she has uh, all the conditions to study. Okay. So one last question about uh, uh, after she graduates from here, how would you consider her chances out in the real world? Uh, with her conditions and the uh, well, the stigma it follows. Of course, uh, for the society in Vietnam, I think another challenge for her yeah, to really insert herself inside the society. But the school is always open, yeah. so 
we will offer her the eat she wants. She can remain in the school and help other newcomers, help other poor youth from in the she, school environment. She could, she could actually just become an instructor. Yeah. Oh yes, or yeah. the trainer in the school. Yeah, yeah. that's nice right. because it's it's very inspiring if she does well. Right. To yeah, see yeah. somebody who has had this difficult life to overcome, to overcome it, yeah. it is very impressive mm -hmm. because, like you told me earlier when we were talking, uh, her problems did not really start with the attack. She had, she comes from a broken home. She's come from a terrible situation, really, and then on top of all of that. She got attacked, and to stay happy and positive after an ordeal like that, it takes a special kind of person to do that. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And she's really strong. Yeah. Very, very strong. Yeah. So now, I think it's amazing what you're doing here, and just thank you for doing this your path to help poor people like this. Thank you. Uh, we are solutions. And our mission is to take care of the poor youth. So this is, we just do our duty and do something for the society, especially for the youth that we dedicated ourselves to for them. Yeah. You're doing an amazing job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi Deb. Nice to meet you. Uh, can you can you tell me a little bit about your life before the uh, assault? Um, Xin chào, em tên là Nguyễn Ngọc Đẹp, uh, and then name is Jimmy Tuổi. That's a seafood factory. She work. Uh, she was working for, and her job is like uh, to pack pack all the seafood to export to other countries. Okay. But uh, why were why were you not in school? Tại sao em không đi học nữa? Dạ là tại vì khi đó nhà em không có đủ điều kiện. Nếu như mà em với lại em muốn của mình đi học nữa thì sẽ không có đủ tiền để đóng học phí. Cho nên em quyết định bỏ học đi cho em học. So because uh, if she and her younger uh, em trai em gái em em trai em gái uh, if she and her younger sister going to school uh, her family couldn't afford it so she decided to go to school so that her sister could continue okay. studying but uh, where were your parents ba mẹ của em ở đâu dạ ba mẹ của em ở kiên giang hiện tại thì họ đang ly hôn và mọi người một nơi uh, the, her parents live in Kinyang province, which is in Mekong Delta, and uh, they are separate now, so they have their own life, their own family. So you don't have any contact with your parents? I do yeah, she uh, haven't contact or yeah, keep in touch with her father for five years. She didn't have any contact with him. And uh, her mother just only visited her when she had the accident. And she, she went to hospital to visit her, but not then. Not ever since. And what 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 is your relationship with the girl that uh, got into the same attack that she did when uh, she was uh, attacked with an acid? Uh, uh, Quen, uh, mẹ cháy đó mẹ của em uh, lúc 
trước kia thì em không có gặp chị ấy nhưng mà sau cái thời gian em đi làm ở xa về thì người nhà không muốn đi xa nữa cho nên là muốn em lên đó làm thì em mới biết chị ấy thôi uh, it's her uh, her she was her cousin yeah she uh, her mother was the sister of uh, that mother yeah and uh, then she that were working far away from home but her family wanted her to be back to her hometown that's why when she back and she met the person that's why she knew tell me about the boy who did this did you know him em nghe là quen được mấy năm rồi sau đó anh ấy hỏi cưới ừ. chị đó không chịu ừ. rồi chị quen người khác cho nên là mấy cấm như chị em so actually she met the, the cousin and her boyfriend at the same time and then she heard that the, they were in relationship for seven years already and he wanted to get married with the cousin but the cousin refused uh, and the cousin had a new boyfriend so that's why so it's jealousy uh, can you tell me with your words about the attack what came before the attack and the attack and what do you remember basically um, em từ công ty về xuống ra lúc 8 giờ ừ. thì ngày hôm đó là một ngày làm rất là mệt rồi thì uh, hai chị em từ công ty chạy về xong rồi gần tới nhà khoảng từ năm trăm mét nữa là tới nhà rồi thì ủng dân phía sau em có một chiếc xe nó chạy áp sát vào em thì um, lúc đó có một thanh niên ở phía sau tại một cái căn nước Phớt, phớt ngang phía sau tóc của em Em cảm thấy, em nghĩ là cái đó là giỡn á Họ giỡn thì em quay qua thì Cái ca tiếp theo nó nó ập tới vào trong mặt em Và lúc đó là em ngã xuống xuống đường Thì uh, em em nhớ, em muốn rõ là Có một mà bác tài xế chạy xe tải Dừng đến rồi xong rồi dẫn em vô lề Sau đó thì uh, Mắt của em, hai mắt của em hoàn toàn không thấy nữa Thì em chỉ có thể là Hát thôi nhưng mà vẫn không hát được nữa Ừ uhm. So uh, actually that were on Sunday And uh, her sister and she finished the ship at 8 p.m and it was very tired rain day for them so they drove back home and just about 500 meters away from home and there was another bike just rode next to her and she felt that something like some water hitting her uh, backpack and uh, she thought it was just a trot and then she turned her face and the next uh, thing happened is that there's a cans of acid just uh, splash on her face. It was very painful and then uh, there was a truck driver who stopped by and to help her to get out. But she, uh, all she could do that is to scream but couldn't on, couldn't really scream out. And she couldn't see anything. Yeah. Did it once you got splashed with the acid? Mm -hmm. Did it hurt immediately, or did it take some time? Khi mà mới bị tẹt đầu thì em ngã chấn thương mình cũng hơi bị đau Cho nên là lúc đó cũng khó cảm giác được Thì tới khi mà em được cái bác tài xế đi em vào lề Thì có người em nó mới nó mới trầm tĩnh lại thì em dùng bàn tay này Sầu vào mặt của mình nó có nó nóng mà 
nó 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 cực kỳ nóng luôn cái cái cảm giác nó nó ghê nó <cười> because she fell off the bike uh, when um, the acid when there was an acid attack yeah so at first when she fell off the bike she just feel pain and she didn't feel anything yet on her face but after the truck driver stopped her to help her to get up then she used her hand to touch the face and she can feel it's really burning very very hot so what happened next uh, do you remember what happened next or do you just uh, wake up in the hospital um, lúc mà em từ lúc bị cho đến lúc em được xuống bệnh viện thì em hoàn toàn tỉnh và đến lúc được bác sĩ dội nước lại lên cho cái chất nó cho đi đó thì em bị ngất chắc khoảng cái thời gian đó thì em dậy em vẫn còn nhớ xưa so actually she uh, when she was taken to the hospital she still conscious so she still knew what happened and then the doctor just splashed water on her face to wash away the chemical and it was so painful so she passed out. Yeah. Tell me, if you can, uh, tell me the first time you saw your face after the attack. It's a stupid question but how did you feel? khi đợt em đi làm ở bệnh viện thơ thì lúc đó người nhà không có cho nhìn vào gương thì em lấy lấy dùng chính điện thoại của mình á em chụp màn hình lại thì lúc đó em bị ngất là chỉ duy nhất lần nổi thôi còn các lần sau thì em nhìn vào gương thì lúc đó em hoàn toàn tự tin vì em nghĩ là mọi việc đã đến như vậy rồi thì mình chấp nhận thôi chứ không có quyền lệ hay là Actually, um, when she was in the hospital, her family didn't want her to see the mirror. And the first time she saw herself on her cell phone, she passed out. She passed out. Yeah, but that's the only for the first time. And then when she keep looking at herself in the mirror, she accepted because that's already happened. There's no That's a huge thing to say. Yeah. How long has it been since the attack? The first six months after uh, this happened, how did you feel? How was, did you hurt? How was your mind? How did you feel? Yeah. Both mentally and uh, physically. Uh, yeah, the, uh, look at the, uh, uh, so in the hospital she still had a lot of injuries on her body so she felt it very painful 
and also you can uh, see that her mouth at last time the skin is not so good so she couldn't eat so much yeah but about her uh, mental she thinks it's in a positive way it's not, not in a negative okay yeah. um when did it start to get better with the pain? Yeah, when I was in the middle of và ngày hôm nay thì uh, em thấy em thấy rất là vui rồi khi uh, mình như thế này mà uh, được học ở một môi trường ở đây được đeo đuổi theo ước mơ của mình và được làm việc chung với tất cả các bạn ở đây thì em rất là vui. She feel very happy today because she is very lucky. She can study in this school with many uh, other students and she can follow her dream. What's your dream? Thì ước mơ của em là gì? Thì khi vừa nói là theo đuổi ước mơ nhưng mà không có ước mơ của em là gì? Và thì uh, từ từ nhỏ thì em đam mê làm bếp Và uh, uh, em rất thích học bếp Thì uh, học bếp đó là em được cảm nhận em là em thích phục uh, muốn, muốn tự mình làm được những món ăn đó để phục vụ cho những người khác So since she was uh, a child, she wanted to be a chef. Yeah. So uh, she feel really, really happy if she can cook something, some dishes to serve for people to make them happy. That's a beautiful thing. The only time you saw these three men was at the trial. Is it right? Have you seen them? Before or after? Actually, before uh, she met him already because uh, her cousin and he were in a relationship. So she met him before. Yeah, I mean after the attack. After the attack, yeah. Only, only at the trial. Yeah, Do you hate him? Cái lúc đầu mà em chưa biết là anh ấy làm á thì lúc đó em cực kỳ rất rất là ghét. Trong tới cái khoảng thời gian sau thì em được biết là do bạn trai của chị họ làm thì em nghĩ là anh làm vậy có lý do không? So actually, uh, at first, she didn't know it was her cousin's boyfriend. Yeah, so she really hate him. But then after that, she knew that it was her cousin's boyfriend. So she think maybe this. He did it for some reason, and actually, he didn't mean to uh, attack her or to give her uh, or to harm her. So she did. Maybe he didn't give it on purpose. So she wouldn't feel hate him. She has a. Very big characteristic because she can forgive the Has he tried to contact you in any way or form? Cái này thì em, khi em nằm viện nó thơ thì uh, em có nghe người nhà em bảo lại là 
lúc mà em nằm viện thì anh có đến ừ. có lúc mà chưa biết là anh ấy nha ừ. thì anh ấy có đến anh ấy nói là uh, anh uh, anh ngồi và lên can ghế anh nói là anh sai rồi cũng anh rất là buồn nhưng mà sau đó thì khoảng tầm 10 ngày thì công an đã bắt được anh ấy rồi từ đó cho sơ thì em không nhập nữa ừ. So actually because now he in jail, but when she were in the hospital, actually she didn't meet him, but she heard her family said that he did come to the hospital to visit her. But at that time, they didn't know that it were him who attacked her. Uh, and uh, he were at the hospital, to sitting outside, and he said that he was wrong, and he was very sad. But because after we visited him, uh, we visited her in the hospital. Ten days later, the police caught him. So since then, uh, they didn't Nothing. see anything. Where do you see yourself ten years from now, or fifteen, just in the near future? Điều đó thì em không dám nghĩ nhưng mà nếu mà hãy đổi được một phần nào trên gương mặt thì hay thằng đó cũng là Chị Lý Sư nói rằng thật sự là chị có thể nghĩ về tương lai và 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 chị có thể nghĩ về um, I'm almost 50 years old and uh, I have never met anyone like you. You inspire me, you make me want to be a better man, you're just the most beautiful person I have ever met. Thank you for talking to me. tiếp sức cho các bạn cũng có hoàn cảnh giống như em à, cũng cũng em cũng cảm ơn à, nhờ những cuộc trò chuyện này mà em cũng học hỏi được nhiều. Yeah, she could like to say thank you uh, for to you and also because of these interviews so she could inspire more people who have the same situation like her uh, to move on. I would be very surprised if she didn't move others to move on.